One hundred, four hundred, one hundred, four hundred. Hey, hey guys, that's kind of weird. Today we're going to look at the 100 to 400 millimeter from Sigma for the Fujifilm X mount. What's interesting about this lens is this is the lens that was made for full frame cameras, but they sort of added a tiny little titi booty kupu. A little Fujifilm mount on there, which can be used for sports or wildlife, or in my case, cityscapes. This is the second lens that has been made for the Fujifilm mount, with the first one being the 18 to 50 millimeter, which I reviewed, I'll link that up below. One thing Sigma is known for is their great image quality. I use Sigma for my portrait work. Images are sharp and have a beautiful quality to them. And uh, they also provide like affordable lenses. So this is in the contemporary line, which is kind of below their sports line, which is more of a professional line. Three main features I loved about the lens. Number one was the size with a 600 millimeter, look at a 600 millimeter in your hand. You can shoot birds, you can shoot sports uh, and landscapes, cityscapes with this. Fits right in your bag. So if you do have the Fujifilm line, this is just a great way to get the most reach you can. One of the things I did get to test this lens on was the Sturgeon Moon, August, 2023. There's just the closest the moon is to the earth or something. But anyway, I didn't even know. I was just <laughs> I was just out shooting the cityscapes and the moon just, once someone was like, look at the moon. I'm like, what do you know moon? And it came out from behind some clouds and I really enjoyed shooting the moon. I got a little video with it, which brings me to the second thing I was most surprised with, the image stabilization. My, the X-T3 I was using doesn't have image stabilization, so this gave me five stops of image stabilization, which allowed me to get some decent video. Although at 600, it's really hard to handhold. <laughs> but I can imagine if you have the X-T5, X-T4, X-S10, those all have in-body image stabilization. And combined with this, you could really get some good video with it. And the third thing I love, check this out, guys. So for the whole time I was using it the normal way you use a zoom lens, which is like this, but this has, you can actually just pull, which I remember maybe Canon's 100 to 400 used to be able to do that. Oh, look at that. It's like it's been lubricated with KY jelly. Now that kind of freaks me out doing that. I feel like I'm breaking it, but that is one way you can fine tune your, um, uh, on the side, we have the usual. We have an autofocus, manual focus switch. We have, uh, you can limit the uh, area of focus. You can have it focus close up or go to infinity. Now, looking on the side of the lens on the top, there is no AF MF switch because Fujifilm lenses don't have AF MF switch. It's on the body of the camera. So here they instead they put an AFL for autofocus lock switch and just normal AF. So that's something that's a little different on the other versions. You also have the image stabilization switch in case you wanna turn that off if it's on a tripod. We should mention there is no tripod collar with this lens. You can purchase an additional mount, which will let you put it on a tripod. I also thought it was cool that there's like a rubberized uh, thingamabob that says 100 to 400. I don't know if that's on the full frame version, but that's pretty cool. Filter size is 67 millimeters, which is super convenient because a lot of lenses that are just normal sized are 67. So great if you have some neutral density filters. It does have a lock, so if you're traveling, it won't fall out. It's, there's, I didn't test the lens creep on this. You creep, let's see. If you're running up, if you're running, it'll creep a little, I guess if you're jogging. Which is why it's great that it has a lock. It also is under a thousand dollars. So we also were able to use, remember we used the Fujifilm 100 to 600, I think that was, 200 to 600, so many numbers. But that lens was a little larger and it was also white. Ugh. So this one, stealthy, small, cheaper, it goes from F5 to 6.3. The Fujifilm goes to f8 when you zoom it all the way in. So 
we have a little bit more light coming out of this one, a little bit more reach out of the Fujifilm one. Now, one thing I didn't test was autofocus because I had the Fujifilm X-T3. And if you have the X-H2S, X-H2, and the new X-T5, those have a newer autofocus system and processor. And I wasn't able to test it with that. Okay, let's quickly look at some photos here. This is uh, 100 and this is 400 zo <laughs> zoomed in. I'm shooting from the other side of the Hudson River to New York City. Here's another example, looking downtown Manhattan. This is at 100 to 400. The lens is very sharp. This is a JPEG straight out of camera. You can actually see a plane in the background. You can even see people at the top there. <laughs> One thing that happened during the shoot was I didn't have a tripod. I actually was gonna bring a tripod for the camera, which I always do, and I left it behind. So it turns out that was kind of good to try the stabilization. I had to bump up my ISO, and this shot, which isn't super sharp, was taken at 1 60th of a second, but we're at 400 millimeters. So we're getting five stops of stabilization. And if I hadn't had coffee, I think I could have, if I tried this a couple more times, I probably could have nailed it at 60th of a second. So that's really cool. Uh, and again, the buildings here, the moon finally started to go over this building. And I posted this image on Instagram. I called that the man and the moon because there's a little dude <laughs> on this balcony here. And uh, I made a little square crop of the image and uh, yeah. And just another look at the moon. Uh, I'm not good at shooting the moon. A lot of people take a bunch of photos of the moon and combine them, but I will show you the craters here. You can see the craters on the edge, which look really awesome. Again, if I had more megapixels, this would be super crazy. And there you have it. If you're looking for a lightweight, small 100 to 400 for your wildlife, for your sports, for your moonscapes <laughs> and your cityscapes, uh, take a look at the Sigma 100 to 400. I think it's a pretty good option. All right, I'll see you guys next time.